Yes, very, um, as long as you don't catch him on a bad day or a bad morning. Morning, uh, mornings are not his best time, especially early morning. I remember we were on Mount Athos and uh, I had to get him up at three to go for a service and then we had to leave to, to take the boat off the island and he was fairly <laughs> grumpy and we actually cleared the deck of an entire ship uh, leaving from Mount Athos back to the mainland of Greece because we had a flaming row about something. I don't know what it was now. Uh, when I went downstairs, they said, you're going to be executed? Uh, I said, no, probably not. <laughs> but you could have a row with him, could you? Oh, God, yes. Oh, yes. And a disagreement what do you call him? What do you call him? I mean, you call him... Oh, I just talk to him as, you know, like I'm talking to you. But you'd say, Philip, or you're... No, not no. usually. I would... I mean, if... He would always say, if I went, now, sir, he would go, OK, what am I being asked to do that I should not do? <laughs> if I, I didn't bother to say that, we would just have a conversation. Right. Right. Because otherwise it gets in the way, I have to say. Arthur, similarly... Informal and <laughs> no, not, to not, the press. no, no, no. He treated the, uh, the media like telegraph poles. You know, he just they were there and he walked around them. <laughs> I never, I never had one conversation except when I've met him in um, press receptions. And after photographing him for ten years, there was a press reception in Washington, and I was introduced. Arthur Edwards from the Sun. He said, "Is that the Baltimore Sun?" <laughs> God, <laughs> you know, I've been there ten years. Well, how long does it take? Right. Look, we've got some of your pictures. Let's have a look at this. Uh, this first one, Arthur, tell oh, us what we're looking at well, here. Well, this is the picture of Prince Boy Charles has just played polo for the Navy down at Tidworth and Lord Mountbatten and uh, Prince Philip, of course, both ex-naval uh, uh, veterans and uh, they're just congratulating him. And what I love about that picture is, of course, Lord Mountbatten was hugely close to Prince of Wales and that just having his arm on his shoulder like that yeah. tells everything. And uh, a year later, of course, he was, uh, he was killed in, yeah. uh, in Ireland and uh, we went back there a couple of years ago with the Prince and uh, it's very moving. Yeah. Bit of a family man, actually, because um, uh, there, there was a time, Martin, when I think he saw himself as the patriarch of the family, and the queen yeah. would be the matriarch of the nation, so to speak. Yes, I mean, I, I think putting it very simply, he wore the trousers within the household in order that she could wear the crown for the people, and I, uh, yeah, that really was important to him. That yes. it was, or is important to him still, that he was there to support her. He ran the family, ran the sort of family business side of things, um, and that was the first priority, so that she could be queen. OK, let's look at the next picture, Arthur. Okay. This one's the 70s. Now we're moving oh, into yeah. the 80s. 80s, 80, 85. This is uh, <laughs> in a place called Xi'an in, uh, oh. in China, and they've just been to look at the terracotta warriors. And that, you thought, would have been the picture of the day, but it wasn't, of course, because uh, the prince uh, was speaking to some students. And uh, let's slip. Well, he said, if you, if you stay here much longer, the kids were saying they were bored. He said, you'll end up with slitty eyes. And, of course... <laughs> A uh, very intrepid reporter called Harry Arnold from The Sun got that. And before you know it, it was, uh, it was the splash. And we splashed on that story two days running. And I remember the headline, Philip gets it all wrong was one day. And the next day it was Queen Veli Veli angry. So, you know, I've never splashed, we've never splashed on the Queen two days running on a royal tour ever. But that, that story... Now, I was asked for some advice about this because China's my area. And I have to say that, you know, we, we've brought a lot of Chinese to see him because we work with all the major religions, Confucianist, Buddhist... And particularly Taoist, he has a great affection for the Taoists of China. And they're always bemused by the fact that the son would think this was a great story, because they just thought it was a great joke. I mean, they can be They didn't know how rude. insulting it is, or it's no, generally... No, because, in... no, I mean, remember the Chinese <coughs> refer to us as guaylo, which means Rather, ghosts. Yeah, yeah. People haven't been properly reincarnated, why, which is why we're all so pale, despite the very good efforts of your makeup people. <laughs> um, so they're, they're, for them, that kind of humour almost slapstick humour, actually is fine. It's, it, was, it was the uptight Brits who had a problem yeah, with it, not, not the Chinese. Some in the diplomatic service, I think, were absolutely... Yes, they were, uh, well, that, 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 that story right, round the world. I mean, I remember all the wires around it, everything. It was just the major story. I think that's the when the, the idea that he has these rather gaffes. odd gaffes every now and then, that's when I think you suddenly... That's when it became a thing, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and also, you know, we're yeah. delighted he did have the gaffes because, you know, it made him into something human. I mean, he was only mm. ever playing mm. jokes with people. That was the thing. But we were, and we, in fact, he castigated us once for reporting them. And he did admit to the slitty eyes, and he did admit that he said to Aboriginals, you're chucking spears at each other. But uh, he said, you were not supposed to hear that. He said, that was private. <laughs> right. But I said, what's <laughs> private on private. tour? No, Nothing private. private. I think it's also this problem, you know, this is the thousandth person you've met this week. And, and I've seen the most incredibly intelligent, bright, active people, like rabbits in a, in a headlights. Yeah, they they, they, they become monosyllabic. Yeah. And he uses humour. OK, sometimes fairly heavy, but he is Navy. 
to sort of just yeah. crack them open yeah, to, a bit. To show, a, to break through the kind of the... Uh, precisely, the precisely. No, no. OK, Arthur, third picture. Now, this is bringing us much closer to the present. There yeah, he is. It's actually is... a really interesting photo. Well, I love that picture. I mean, it's, um, you know, I have to tell people, it's the Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> uh, but um, it's um, Windsor Hall show and it's pouring with rain and it's, <clears> it's really a miserable day. But, you know, he brought carriage driving to, 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 to prominence in Britain with him when he took part in it. And, uh, and I think he's still doing it today, Martin. Mm, he's still, he is, yeah. And when, he, when he's retired, he'll carry on doing it. And, Absolutely. Uh, he's been, uh, and when, he, when, he, when he goes for it, when he's in competition, I promise you, he is, he is fierce. He's a, he's a real battler. So, you know, he, I, I, I kind of didn't like him for years, but ended up loving him because of... Oh, is that really good? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Him evolves over oh, no, the I, I thought he was, you know, he was very rude to the press. We well, ignored us, but... You know, slowly over the years, I've got to love him. And now, <laughs> now when we go on a royal tour, when we go on a, an engagement, we won't be saying what colour. We always photographers say, "What do you reckon the Queen colour a Queen will be wearing today?" It's all blue, red. We'll be saying, "Do you think the Duke will come today?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gents, thanks both, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks both very much indeed.